Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to continue working on our personal finance budget here. We've really got a lot of it set up and taken care of. There's really just a couple more things to do. We've got our income categories, our expense categories. We've put in budget amounts for both of those things. We have we know the percent of total income for each ex income item and each expense item. Budget amounts, and we've got one month of actual amounts, which will have an impact on our, the beginning balance of our checking account. So if I started off with two grand in the beginning of April, I had a month of income, had a month of expenses that showed up as a loss that negatively impacted my beginning balance for the next month in May. Let's do this too. I'm going to put a couple more columns over here to the right. To make it easy on me and you, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on my cell D1, which is the first cell to the right of where my budgeted column is going to display. I'm going to jump over to View. Then I'm going to go to Freeze Panes and Freeze Panes. So now when I scroll to the right, my B and C columns, as well as my A column, will stay visible. So I'll always be able to see my percent of total income and budgeted amounts as I scroll around there. Now in the columns over here, I want to go ahead and put in Average. Then I'll press my Tab key. And I'm going to put in Total. Go ahead and select some formatting. Home Ribbon, Format Painter, copy that. Now I do like these to be right aligned since the numbers by default are right aligned, so I'll just hit the right alignment there. And I can actually just bring these totals right over just using my fill handle. Now when I calculate an average, I want to get the average actual expense or income in this case from all the previous months. So I've got my cell selected where my average is going to display. I can go to my auto my um, auto sum drop down, choose the average option. Now by default it's selecting more than I want. I really only want it to select in my case D4 through H4. So I can use my mouse and just correct that selection D4 through H4. Once I see that that's proper, I can see it up in my formula bar up there too. I can press the enter to accept, and it's telling me that I've had an average of 24.90 per month for income net pay from job one, which makes sense considering I only had one month of data. It's only one data point. And then I can just copy this down. So I can kind of say, all right, I've had an average 805, average 500. So now I can see what my average total income is going to be. I'll do something similar for total, but this time I'll simply choose the auto sum. I don't want to include the average. I do want to add up though once again summing D4 through H4 which is my net pay job one for April, May, June, July, and August. That's accurate D4 through H4 press enter and I can autofill to accept that. So then we can keep track of total income and of course where this is going to come into play let's say over the months I have a 20 oops let me do a 2400 and then 2410 2420, 2400. Okay, so let's find out over the months. I start to see, and this is where it'll be kind of interesting, that my net pay from job one is actually only averaging about 2424 per month, and not the 2500 per month that I originally budgeted. So obviously that's a problem. We don't want to budget more for income than what we really get. You don't want to budget less for expenses than what you really have. It's just not useful. So once I can see that my average net pay from job one is really around 24, 24, and it seems to be pretty consistent, then I can change my budget amount from 2,500 to maybe 25, 25. And there we go. Now my average for these are still the same since there's no other data points to affect them. And I can also find out, okay, what's been my total pay and things like that. So now it's a little bit more realistic. I'm going to go ahead and take this cell cursor right there on the border, control key, click and drag, let go of the mouse, let go of the control key. I'm going to kind of repeat this process. This time though, let's try something a little different. What if I copy these cells, select the cells down here for my expenses and just press the enter key. Clearly they're not going to be accurate so let's clean them up a bit. Actually they may be pretty good. Let's double check average. D10 through H10 Yep, looks good. Press escape to get out of there. Total summing D10 through H10 looks good. 
Go ahead and select those. In fact, I can auto fill down, do a little format painting. So just bring that right over. Actually, there's really no need to necessarily calculate those average gains and the total total uh, gains. I don't know, it could be interesting. So now my budget's looking a little bit more complete. And of course, just like you did with the income, you can find out if your expenses are tr really budgeted appropriately. Let's uh, go to entertainment, for instance. And let's say in May, it's 160, 200, 190, 180. And then you start to realize that, wow, you're averaging $173 per month on your entertainment. Maybe that's too high, maybe that's too low, maybe that's just right. But it's definitely not what I expected to be spending. My budgeted $150. So I have a couple choices here. I can say, you know what, i got to really rein in my entertainment spending because it's over my budget and it's affecting the bottom line. Or I can say, okay, you know, let me just change my budget amount. Maybe I will be spending $175 per month on entertainment. And now that I've got this information with the average, it makes a little bit more sense on what's realistic. And I can say, okay, for the past few months, I've spent almost $900 on entertainment. Once again, now that you have these numbers in hand, you can find out where are you going, is it meeting your financial goals, and stuff like this. And this is all using some basic features in Excel, which anybody can use in order to keep track of this stuff. And this is on the road to using Excel to make real business decisions because although you're using this for personal finance, personal budget, there's no reason you can't expand the complexity and the depth of this worksheet to use it for a small business and then maybe into a medium-sized business to keep track of income and expenses and cash flow.